Welcome back to City Skylines 2 Overexplained. Today we're diving into some of the best mods currently available in City Skylines and we're going to cover how to install them, how they work and some interesting ways to use them too. The vanilla game is solid but with a few simple mods you can turn this game into the best city building experience there is. For this Overexplained save I'm just going to focus on essential quality of life mods. Nothing game breaking, just tools that add more flexibility or help bypass some of the most frustrating mechanics in the game. If you're just after quick recommendations, there's a YouTube short linked in the top right of your screen that covers the most key mods at a glance. But if you want a full breakdown with all the details and examples, then you're in the right place. As always, this video is fully timestamped, so feel free to skip ahead if there's something you already know, and let's get into it. Here are the best mods for City Skylines 2. Now the first thing you're probably wondering is, how do I even get mods? Am I going to have to faff around downloading a new launcher or, or spend ages copying over files? Well quite the opposite, it's actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh really? About a year ago the developers added Paradox Mods, an inbuilt workshop for browsing, installing and managing your mods. If you don't know, Paradox Interactive is the publisher of City Skylines 2 and also the developer of popular strategy games like Hearts of Iron, Crusader Kings or Stellaris. And to access Paradox Mods, there is a button conveniently located on the menu right here. Opening this will allow you to browse all mods, ranging from basic quality of life mods, through to total overhaul mods, or even custom maps and things like that. Paradox Mods also allows you to create and switch between playsets. These are essentially like groups of mods that you've put together and it allows you to switch between them easily. For example, when I built the Line Mega Project, go and check out that video. It required a bunch of specific mods to change the look of the map and things like that that I never really used, so I created its own playset and used it just for that playthrough. For this save, I'm probably going to make my own playset and call it Overexplained. But now though, now we're familiar with playsets, we can go ahead and install the first mod I want to talk about today, and that is Anarchy. So you can come into Browse and search in the search bar here. If it doesn't pop up, you might need to tweak the sort by details here, but this is the one we want. This is Anarchy with the orange A and the circle around it. All you have to do is press this plus button here. This will also prompt us to download another mod as well that is dependent on it so we'll agree to that as well. And once it's downloaded, you'll need to go back out to the menu and the game will prompt you to restart. You need to do this every time you change your playset and your mods, and this process is the same for all other mods we're gonna talk about today. Anarchy is by far one of my favorite mods in the game, and it's also one of the most simple. Sadly, it doesn't involve creating a city with no government, although that would be pretty cool. All it does is add this little button down here and removes restrictions when you're placing things. It's no secret that building restrictions in this game can be quite annoying. In fact, I moaned about it in my last video. And when I talk about building restrictions, I'm talking about those pesky little pop-ups that come up when you're trying to build anything like slope too steep or overlapping items, sometimes even building in the water. They're very annoying. But now that we've got anarchy, we can do this. Any time when the game usually stops you from placing anything, you can just toggle anarchy and say F you, I'm going to build it anyway. And this button works like a toggle, so this is off, this is on, or you can use the default keyboard shortcut of Control A to toggle it on and off, but this does conflict with another mod so I think I've got it unbound. This mod will remove the error checks for just about everything in the game, including placing objects, building roads, drawing areas like with Specialized Industry, the upgrade tool and even the terrain tool as well. Anarchy also has its own in-game settings found in here and you can toggle between a bunch of different options to your own liking. And some of my favourite ways to use Anarchy as I've just shown you include building bigger specialised industry zones, placing trees in people's gardens. It also makes building around water a lot easier 
and you can get in very snugly with the water here. Some others include building around roundabouts and upgrading around roundabouts, and placing your pedestrian bridges steeper than you usually can. That's just about it for Anarchy, one of the best mods because it's so simple and non-intrusive and really gets rid of a lot of frustrations in the game. I'm going to rank it a solid 10.6 out of 12.5. The next mod in my sights is Move It, another absolute staple of City Skylines 2. Move It lets you... Move it. This mod lets you reposition things after you've placed them. So you can move stuff around, you can rotate them, you can even raise and lower things as well. Once again, the vanilla building mechanics can be a bit janky, or at least a bit restrictive. But Move It is perfect for smoothing things out and getting everything just right. Installing Move It works exactly the same as Anarchy. Just head to Paradox Mods, find Move It, hit the plus button and restart your game, and that should automatically add it to your current playset. Once you're in game, you can hit M to bring up Move It, or you can just click these white arrows down here. Once Move It's open, you can select any object in the game that isn't the terrain and move it exactly how you like. You can select an item and click and drag left click to move it around. When you've got an item selected, you can also hold right click and drag your mouse to rotate things as well. And finally, you can hit the page up and page down button to raise or lower things as well. Some other useful shortcuts include Control Z, which will undo things, and then Shift Control Z, which will redo things as well. Or you can hit these arrows down here in the Move It menu. Now, Move It comes with three modes. There's the single mode, which should open by default. This lets you grab one item and move it around to your heart's content. There's also a marquee mode here, which is very similar to the marquee mode in the zoning. This allows you to drag a box and select multiple items, move them all around together like this. Once again, you can move them, you can rotate, and you can page up and page down. And finally, there is the manipulation mode. Now this one's quite different from the others. If we find a road, let's find a good example here. Say this road here. You might notice when we mouse over a road, when we're in manipulation mode, we get these pinky purple circles in here, connected by a dotted line. These show the angles of the connections at each end of the road. And while you're in manipulation mode, you can grab these circles. It basically lets you adjust individual elements within an object rather than moving the object itself. So for example, if we wanted to change where the bend in the road happens, we can shift this up or down. We can go up or down to increase or decrease the amount of curve. And we can even change where the road joins here, although it gets a bit janky. As the mod developer says, this is a very powerful tool. So be ready with your undo button and, and just be careful that you can completely break things if you're not careful. Now, while we've got the Move It menu open, you'll see that there's some more options down here. So we can filter in and out objects that we want to grab. So if I was in marquee mode, I unselect everything except for plants. I could drag, drag a box over the whole city and it will only select the plants here. And that works for all the other types of filters we can use. And finally, there's the toolbox. Some of these are really powerful, but I'm not going to explain it in too much detail here. Go into game, try it out for yourself and play around with them because they can be really handy in very niche situations. Now some of my favourite ways to use Move It include raising and lowering bridges, adjusting the orientation of houses so that they align with the road better. It can also be useful for smoothing out slopes on roads like this or like this. And of course, it's great for smoothing out roads as well. You can grab these nodes and straighten out these roads and make them look a lot nicer. Overall, it's a very solid mod. It's one of those that once you start playing with it, you'll struggle to play without it. I'm rating it a solid 4.1 out of 4.9.
Next, we are on to Find It, another very handy mod for more advanced building. Find It gives you access to all assets in the game, including even those added by other mods. An asset is any in-game object, whether it's a building, or a tree, or a street sign. This even includes objects within other objects, so this could be garden sheds, or even AC units in industrial buildings. And Find It collects them all together and lets you browse through them easily and quickly through the Find It menu, which can be accessed by clicking this magnifying glass here, or you can press Ctrl F. This menu is pretty well organised, it gives you a bunch of different headings to click through with their own subheadings as well. The asterisk menu is just everything. It's not filtered at all, and you can see it's showing 5400 items here that we can scroll through. We also get access to the networks tab, and this includes your roads and your rails and anything to do with them as well. This even lets you place things like the highway support pillars, and it allows you to create some really cool custom structures just out of these parts here. We also get access to the Paths tab. And here you can place what are called net lanes. These are essentially paths on top of existing roads that are used by the AI to know where they can walk or drive. And it allows you to place invisible versions. So, so if you wanted to give access to something without actually placing a road, you can use these invisible paths here as well. And next we get the Buildings heading which includes all the assets for all the different types of zoning. So this lets you choose exactly the type of building you want to place without having to leave it to chance like you do when you zone it manually. And you can even choose the different levels here. So you can see the L1 here, meaning level one, and this goes all the way up to L5 being the level five. And these are the same levels that you can find here. And as I mentioned previously, when things level up, it actually changes the look of the building. So if you wanted a more advanced version of this house, you can put down the level 5 one right off the bat. And that's the same for both the service buildings here and the trees as well. There's lots of different options here. Finally, one of the most useful ones is props. Now these get their own subheadings here, which is great because there's over 14,000 items to choose from. And this is like what I mentioned earlier. There's the AC units and the antennas and the garden chairs. And you can put these down to decorate areas exactly how you like. As I'm sure you can tell, this mod is best utilised by people who like to detail thoroughly, because you could spend literally days scrolling through all these different building options. Thankfully though, you don't have to, because Find It comes with its own filtering options, so you can filter down the amount of options to find what you're actually looking for. And you can access it by clicking this funnel icon here. Now to best show this off, I'm going to use an example. So I've been eyeing up this bit of real estate here on the cliff by the shore, and I want to build some really nice houses just in this little gap here. So first I'm going to clear the trees. And then while I'm in the find it menu, I can come into buildings and come to residential. When I go to place things, I'll get to see the grid here. And I can see I've got probably four cells worth of depth. And you can use this filter tab over here. So let's say we want four tiles of depth. And we want it to be a low density residential. Finally, we want it to be a level five building because it's going to be quite a nice house. And here's all our options. So we could come in, put down this lovely house right on the cliff. For some reason, it just doesn't want me to place anything here. It says everything is condemned. Ah, I know why. You need to color in the zoning behind it here. So if I color this to seaside residential, it still doesn't work. But you get the point. You can pick and choose the exact type of house you want for the right area here. Another really useful feature of Find It is the Picker option. And you can access it by using this pipette button down here or by pressing Ctrl P. And this will allow you to click on any object in the game and immediately have it in your hand. So let's say we wanted to continue this road down here. Rather than going through the road menu and finding the exact road that I used previously, I can just select the picker, click on the road I want, and then it's in my hands, ready to keep building. And this works for roads, buildings, and even, as you might have seen, the road markings as well. I can grab these arrows, place more of them if I wanted. I will say that some people might find this a bit cheaty, because it gives you access to everything in the game right off the bat and regardless of your milestone. However, you still have to pay for things. 
I couldn't come in here and find the nuclear power station. I still need five million quid to put it down. So it's not too cheaty. Overall, a really handy mod that is great if you're interested in custom builds and detailing nicely, but it's not nearly as universally useful as the previous two mods. So I'm only going to rate it a 1 out of 1.2. Now the final mod on my list is Plop the Growables. Now the reason I'm mentioning it after Find It is because Plop the Growables is more like an add-on to Find It rather than a standalone mod in itself. As the name suggests, it lets you plop growable buildings without them instantly being condemned. You remember a few minutes ago when those buildings I placed on the cliff were instantly condemned? Plop the growables will disable the growable building zone checks, so you can place them just about anywhere as long as they have road access. And by growables, I mean any building that has a level that will naturally grow and level up as the occupants invest more money into the property. So this applies to anything you can zone, such as residential, commercial and industrial. While this might seem like a simple change, this means you can build a completely customised and hand-placed neighbourhood, with the exact buildings you choose in the exact place that you might want to put them. This mod also lets you lock the building's level, using this button here. So if you built a small rural hamlet with level 1 buildings and you wanted to keep them at level 1, you can just hit this button and it will stop it from levelling up. The beauty of Plop the Growables when combined with the other three mods that I've mentioned so far is that these guys give you complete creative freedom with how you want your builds to turn out. In vanilla, you just colour in the zoning cells, see what comes out and then you're stuck with it. But with Anarchy, Move It, Find It and Plop the Growables, you get the final say in how the buildings look, which way they face, what level they are and where you can place them. And that's why, in my mind, these are the four most staple mods in the entire game. And the only ones I'd recommend you try first before adding any others to your playset. Overall, Plop the Growables is not the be-all and end-all of mods, but I think it's the cherry on the cake for beginner-friendly mods. That's why I'm rating it a solid 16 out of 19.5. Now the final thing I want to do in this video is a bit of renaming, because I've had some inspiration for the names of these districts here. Firstly, our lovely seafront district here, I'm going to rename to Russia Rise. After my boy Epic Gamer Russia, love you man. And the two residential districts behind Russia Rise will be named Jessup Park. After Aaron Jessup, who donated on my last video. Thank you dudes, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. And that's it from me today, sorry for the delay in uploads. For once, I've been making the most of the British summer over here. Spending the last few weeks out on the water, dolphin spotting of all things. Anyway, next episode I'm going to do some more building and expanding, so if you want to keep up to date, hit subscribe and you'll see me in the next episode.